All right, so the two auto linear scales have arrived and we're gonna be using those as part of a touch DRO installation on the new Project Bridgeport mill here. But before we get started on that, let's spend some time just talking generically about mounting linear scales on a Bridgeport mill. I've had lots of questions on this, so I feel it's worthwhile to just go over the installation of the linear scales on a Bridgeport mill. Regardless if they're too auto or you're gonna to use touch DRO, let's just talk a little bit about mounting scales on a Bridgeport mill. So we're gonna be doing all three axis, that's both X, Y, and Z. However, we're going to use the knee for the Z axis. If you want Z axis on the mill head, which is rarely used in my humble opinion, I would recommend getting one of these small digital scales that you can get for the quill. Uh, Muy Toyo Quill Mate, I think is the name of that item. Any case, let's get back to the linear scale installation. So first, let's discuss the x-axis installation. The x-axis linear scale is mounted centered on the back of the table, regardless of the table size. And the importance of getting that centered is to make sure that the reader will be able to traverse all the way to the left and to the right as the table moves to the left and the right. These are mounted with quarter 20 cap screws that are drilled and tapped into the back of the table. And the reader is mounted with a small piece of angle iron. In this case, it's aluminum extrusion. And if you notice, the extrusion sticks out past the reader. Now, the reason I did this in this fashion is to prevent crashes with the back of the vertical here. If something was going to hit, you want this to extend past the reader and the scale. Now, depending on where your vise is, the vise may prevent that crash as well. But in any case, keep that in mind when you're mounting the reader here to put something underneath the reader or to extend past the reader to prevent the reader from crashing into the vertical portion of your mill. Okay, now let's move over to the other side here. The y-axis. The y-axis scale is moved by connecting it to the side of the cradle here. Notice I, I, in my case, I had existing holes here and I made an aluminum mounting plate that would then go down and hold the reader and that's what moves the reader back and forth. In this case, the scale is stationary and it is mounted to the knee. The way I mounted that to the knee was the existing holes that are on the side of your knee. If you've noticed in the casting, there are three holes. Those are um, 3 8 16, I believe. And I used uh, what would seem kind of a strange option. I used this countersunk screw, but I drilled out the center for quarter 20 threads. And what this allowed me to do was position, and if you can see this here, position the reader slightly away from the knee. That way oil that drips off the saddle does not run directly down onto the scale, it runs past it. And the countersunk head provides a nice flat surface to mount the scale against. So again, that countersunk screw has been drilled and tapped through the head, through the Allen section here for quarter 20, and then is mounted with quarter 20 cap screws. And coincidentally, the positioning of those screw holes there, that one and this one, mate up perfectly to the scale that is required for the x-axis, and that is a 300 millimeter scale. Now this is a 12 inch table. Remember, if you wanna know if you have a 12 inch or a nine inch table, you can look at your serial number. And if you have BR12, you have 12 inch travel. If you just have BR, you've got nine inch travel and you will require a different scale. So again, for a 12 inch travel, you'll want that 300 millimeter scale. So mounted here, mounted there, and then just simple angle bracket 
to hold the reader in the proper position underneath the scale. Now, for the z-axis, I did not want the open side of the reader, which would be this side, excuse me, the open side of the scale where the reader slides back and forth. I did not want that facing uh, the table where chips would be going directly into the scale. So I essentially mounted that scale backwards, facing away from the table. Now, I mounted that with two aluminum blocks here. And if you notice carefully, those blocks are pushed away from the, the vertical body of the mill by two jacking screws. In these aluminum blocks, you can just see it here, and there is a second one down here. I drilled and tapped for quarter 20, and then I put quarter 20 set screws in there, which push against the body on this side. So there is a center, excuse me, a center mounting hole that's quarter 20 that holds the block and the, the scale to the mill, but that is loose until I tighten these screws just enough to where the reader, the scale, is perfectly parallel with the knee here. Because if you notice, the casting here on the Bridgeport body is curved. So if you were to attach it directly to the body, the scale would be cocked inwards and the reader would not read properly. So by creating this small aluminum block with these two jacking screws in here, I was able to keep the mounting position perfectly parallel with the knee here. So there is one of these blocks on the top and there is a similar block on the bottom. Then it was just a matter of making a standoff here with this little bridge structure, so to speak, that goes over and holds the reader on this side. So that's how we're holding the scale, what would be the Z scale uh, for this axis. And this scale is 400 millimeter. So the Y axis was 300 millimeter the Z axis is 400 millimeter, and the X axis is 700 millimeter. Now the cabling, as you see here, I wanted the cabling to be kind of nice and neat and out of harm's way. So you can get these little adhesive squares here. They use it for wiring. They have a both vertical and horizontal method to attach a wire tie. I just made nice, generous loops there, and then these all come together here. I collect them up on this portion of the knee so they all move together. These are Velcro ties that then hold all those neatly together and those come up on the mounting arm of the readout, the, the head unit, and then I collect them here while we tie them together and they go in the back of the display unit. So overall, again, in my opinion, this gives a nice, clean, very functional install. This has been running for quite some time with zero issues, no interference, very accurate. I haven't had any issues with chips. Now they do come with chip guards, which I do not have installed, but I made allowance for that by keeping this away here and, and letting chips and oil fall beneath and by mounting this the other way so chips don't get in the back. And then on the Z axis, excuse me, on the x-axis, it's mounted very tightly against the table. Now I do get some oil and stuff that builds up on here on the top of this scale, but again, as a hobbyist, I'm not doing production work. I'm not getting a mountain of chips that I let stay there. I keep my machine very clean and tidy, so it has not been an issue for me. So I hope this helps in the overall installation of the X, Y, and Z scales on a Bridgeport mill.
addendum to the video I just did regarding mounting scales on a Bridgeport mill. The scales, when they arrive, will have this plastic plug placed in between the reader and the scale. And if we look closely at this plastic plug, it does several things. It, first of all, maintains the very critical distance between the reader and the scale, but it also aligns the reader perfectly within the scale. And these are critical for proper operation of your linear, linear scale. So during installation, when you're getting your marks set up, when you're doing your drilling, make sure that you remember to leave this plastic guide in and it will maintain those critical tolerances for you. Once the scale is installed, then remember to remove this guide and that will allow free motion of the reader on the scale. So you can move the scale now with the guide in there during installation, but just remember, once installation is done, take this plastic guide out and that will allow the reader to move freely.